I share my home with my son, and it's time for you to go. Those harsh words from my mother-in-law, whom I've been living with, took me by surprise. I've always gone out of my way to treat her kindly, making sure she was comfortable and lacked for nothing. However, it seemed like she never really appreciated my efforts. There have been instances where she was unkind to me, leading to feelings of resentment on my part. When she told me to leave, I unexpectedly found myself agreeing, realizing that deep down I was ready to go. My husband was away on a business trip, leaving my mother-in-law the one who would face difficulties without me. She seemed to forget that the comfortable city life she enjoyed was thanks to me. With that realization, I decided it was time to move out. My name is Betty, and I'm about to turn 34. My husband and I have been married for a decade, both of us working professionals. We had thought about starting a family, but medical advice suggested it would be challenging for me to conceive naturally. After considering fertility treatments, we ultimately chose to enjoy our life together without children. Then, after my father-in-law passed away, leaving my mother-in-law with mobility issues due to bad knees, we faced the decision of her living arrangement. Considering her condition and the fact that we were in the process of building a new house, we included a specially designed room for her. This room, equipped with a small bathroom, kitchen, and toilet on the ground floor, was meant to make her life easier, despite stretching our budget. We hoped this gesture would show our care and thoughtfulness, but it seems my mother-in-law didn't value our efforts as much as we thought. I never had any negative feelings towards my mother-in-law until she moved in with us. Since then, her behavior has changed. She's become more confrontational, especially when my husband is not around. My husband's job in sales often requires him to travel, and lately, his trips have been longer and abroad, leaving me alone with my mother-in-law. On the day he left for his latest trip, after bidding him goodbye, I was getting ready for work when my mother-in-law confronted me with her demand. This incident made me reflect on our situation and ultimately led to my decision to leave, recognizing that it might be for the best for both of us. One morning, I was startled by the booming voice of my mother-in-law calling me from downstairs. Curious and a bit alarmed, thinking it was an emergency, I hurried down only to find her calmly sitting in the living room, absorbed in a television program. It seemed like a regular day until she demanded I make her breakfast immediately. This request took me by surprise as she had always prepared her own meals, given that both my husband and I work full-time jobs. Puzzled by her sudden change of heart, I wondered if she was feeling unwell and suggested a doctor's visit, to which she retorted that she was perfectly fine. She then expressed an expectation for me to take care of her, citing examples of other households where elaborate five-course breakfasts were the norm. She specifically mentioned a family where the wife, a homemaker, manages to serve meals thrice daily. I tried explaining the impracticality of her expectations due to our work schedules, but she dismissed my explanation by simply turning up the TV volume, clearly uninterested in my reasoning. Later that day, after returning from work, I prepared dinner, choosing to make lasagna, a dish I knew she enjoyed. However, she criticized it for being too salty and disposed of the entire meal, marking the start of a period where she became increasingly critical and overbearing towards me. The situation escalated to the point where a Frien suggested it might be a form of bullying. This led me to research online, where I discovered numerous accounts of similar experiences with difficult mothers-in-law. Determined to address the issue, I took a day off work to have a candid discussion with her. I approached her with an open heart, expressing my desire to understand her sudden hostility and resolve any issues she might have with me. Initially, she seemed unreceptive, but as I persisted, she began to open up. She revealed her feelings of envy towards the family she had mentioned earlier. She admired their spacious home and the way the daughter-in-law cared for her in-laws, igniting a sense of dissatisfaction with our living situation. This conversation shed light on her behavior, revealing the deep-seated emotions driving her actions. It became apparent that her abrupt demands and criticism were expressions of her longing for a different family dynamic, one that mirrored the seemingly ideal situation she admired in others. Recognizing the root of the problem allowed us to address her feelings and work towards improving our relationship. Reminding us of the importance of communication and understanding and navigating the complexities of family life. My mother-in-law's envy stemmed from seeing others enjoy social gatherings with coffee and numerous guests, a lifestyle she aspired to in her retirement. 
Despite our home being sizable by neighborhood standards, complete with a spacious backyard ideal for barbecue parties, she felt overshadowed and hesitant to invite guests, fearing she couldn't match up. Our discussions about this didn't lead to a clear solution. Then, a peculiar incident unfolded. As I left for work one morning, I noticed odd looks from a neighbor and whispers that seemed directed at me. Concerned about a potential wardrobe or makeup mishap, I found nothing amiss. The cause of the whispers became clear later that day. A neighbor approached me with rumors of alleged violence towards my mother-in-law, supposedly stemming from our discussion about her lifestyle desires. According to the rumor, I had aggressively told her to leave if she persisted in her ways. This was far from the truth, as I harbored no such intentions or actions. Despite my explanations, the rumor had taken root, casting me as the aggressive wife in the neighborhood narrative. This label weighed on me until it became unbearable about six days after my husband departed on a business trip. The thought of discussing this issue with him during his busy schedule was daunting, so I opted to first address it with my mother-in-law. I expressed my observation of her growing dislike towards me, highlighting my desire for us to coexist peacefully as family. Despite my efforts, it seemed impossible to alter her perception. I tentatively suggested that living apart might be best. Her response was unexpectedly harsh. She admitted to never liking me, criticizing my contributions and lifestyle, particularly highlighting her disdain for a woman who focuses on work over family. Her words stunned me, especially since the financial responsibilities of our home, including the down payment and mortgage, had been my burden. This misunderstanding seemed to root deeper than mere jealousy over social gatherings. It touched on fundamental differences in values and expectations. This confrontation illuminated the complexities of our relationship, suggesting a need for a more profound dialogue or reconsideration of our living arrangement to resolve the underlying tensions and misunderstandings. It seemed my mother-in-law might have forgotten the financial dynamics of our household. I am the primary provider, covering most of our living expenses, while my mother-in-law enjoys an allowance from my husband, funded indirectly by my income. Despite my husband's diligent work, his earnings are less than mine leading us to a mutual decision. My income would go towards our current expenses, and his would be saved for the future, especially since we don't have children. This arrangement was clearly communicated to her by my husband before we all started living together, along with a caution against wasteful spending. However, since my husband left for his business trip, my mother-in-law seemed more engrossed than ever in daytime TV and infomercials, likely racking up orders on a whim. Amid these reflections, she made an audacious demand. She wanted me to leave our home, insinuating that her son, my husband, might even prefer a divorce. Realizing the futility of argument, I resigned myself to her wishes, quickly packing my essentials. As I prepared to leave, her smirk and mocking laughter pierced me. Despite my efforts to be accommodating, driving her around, keeping her company, respecting our mutual decision not to have children— her demands escalated beyond reason. Fueled by a mix of anger and resolve, I left, pondering my immediate future. My childhood home, miles away by plane, wasn't an option, nor could I leave my job or burden my parents with this turmoil. Instinctively, I thought of my cafe, the small business I run independently, employing a couple of part-time student workers. The cafe, nestled in a story building with additional space for an office and storage, presented a viable refuge. It wasn't just a place of work, but a potential living space, eliminating my commute and offering a temporary sanctuary. This decision, born out of necessity, marked the beginning of a new chapter, one where my resilience would be tested away from the comfort of what I once called home. Moving out meant I no longer had to prepare meals for my mother-in-law, freeing up more time to focus on my work. As someone deeply devoted to my job, the prospect of additional working hours filled me with enthusiasm. I made a makeshift living area in my office, clearing away cardboard boxes and setting up a cozy spot with a blanket for sleeping. I also organized a table and chairs to facilitate my work. When the part-time students who work for me came in for their shifts, they were surprised by the changes but quickly offered their support after I shared my situation. Their willingness to help and their kind nature made me feel truly appreciative of having them on my team. Their excellent customer service skills have consistently been highlighted in our cafe's reviews, 
prompting me to consider a pay raise for them. That evening, I received a message from my husband, who had returned from his business trip earlier than anticipated. Upon finding many of my belongings missing, he confronted my mother-in-law, who was initially reluctant to disclose my departure. After about an hour, she revealed the truth, prompting my husband to attempt contacting me. Despite his multiple calls, he hadn't shown up at my workplace, a gesture of his respect for my need for space. Feeling remorseful for worrying him, I promptly returned his call. He was eager to understand what had transpired, and although I hesitated at first, his insistence led me to share the ordeal with my mother-in-law. His reaction was one of anger and concern, and he expressed a desire to discuss everything in detail after I wrapped up work and secured the cafe and office for the night. This moment underscored the challenges we faced, but also highlighted the importance of open communication and mutual support within our relationship. Arriving home around 9 p.m., I was apprehensive about facing my husband, knowing he was exceptionally angry. The house was dimly lit, with only the first floor lights on, indicating my husband and mother-in-law were probably in the living room. My key failed to unlock the door, a clear sign that something was amiss. My husband opened the door for me, revealing my mother-in-law seated inside with a displeased look. It turned out she had changed the locks in my absence, a fact my husband had missed since he returned to an already unlocked house. My husband was eager to understand the events of the past three week, so I recounted the difficulties I faced with my mother-in-law, her unreasonable behavior, refusal to listen, and the spreading of false rumors about me. Whenever I challenged her accusations, she branded me a liar. But she fell silent when my husband pressed for her side of the story. She then accused me of being aggressive towards her, a claim she believed the neighbors could corroborate. The discussion seemed endless and fruitless until I decided to present concrete evidence. I had been discreetly recording audio and video clips on my smartphone, capturing my mother-in-law's derogatory comments and unreasonable demands. This included her berating me about household duties and making hurtful remarks about my inability to have children. Upon viewing these recordings, my husband's anger intensified, while my mother-in-law turned at Ashen, feebly attempting to dismiss the evidence as a misunderstanding and accusing me of selective editing. However, my husband's familiarity with video editing allowed him to quickly discern that the footage was genuine. His trust in me was evident, and he began to seriously contemplate the idea of us living apart from my mother-in-law, who strongly objected to the notion. Despite her protests, my husband's stance was unwavering indicating a significant shift towards addressing the ongoing tensions and seeking a more peaceful living situation. During this tumultuous time, my husband and I had long discussions about the best course of action for our family, which ultimately led us to a decision we had previously been reluctant to consider, moving my mother-in-law into a nursing home. Initially, we had all agreed that living together was the best option, but the situation had evolved. Given her mobility issues and our demanding work schedules, we realized that we couldn't provide the level of care and attention she required. My husband, who has a soft spot for me that he doesn't often show openly, had been mulling over this idea for some time. Despite his usual preference to keep the peace, he prioritized my well-being, a testament to the depth of his love and the quick progression of our relationship from dating to marriage. When the suggestion of a nursing home was brought up, my mother-in-law was understandably upset, having always expressed her aversion to such facilities. She pleaded with us to reconsider, but seeing no other viable option to ensure her safety and proper care, my husband stood firm on the decision. This was a clear indication of his support for me over his mother, something she seemed to have not anticipated. Eventually, my mother-in-law apologized for her behavior, but the damage was done, and my husband's resolve remained unchanged. Amid these family dynamics, I poured my energy into my café, expanding its operating horrors to include a breakfast and introducing evening alcohol service. To my astonishment, these changes nearly doubled our customer base, a success that, in a moment of mixed emotions, I sarcastically credited to my mother-in-law's actions. The irony of thanking her for forcing me into a situation that led to unexpected growth for my business did not land well, her displeasure evident in her tight-lipped response and unsmiling eyes. Ultimately, we chose a senior living facility for my mother-in-law that, despite its higher cost, was renowned for its exemplary services. 
This decision was made with her best interests at heart, aiming to provide her with a supportive and caring environment. The transition marked a new chapter for us all, moving forward from past tensions with hope for a more peaceful and positive future. Despite the challenges with my mother-in-law, I've always been grateful to her for the role she played in shaping the person my husband has become. This gratitude influenced our decision to select the best possible nursing facility for her, aiming for a place where she would receive excellent care and support. However, adapting to her new environment proved difficult for her. During my visits, staff reported that she had been involved in conflicts with other residents over seemingly trivial matters, such as making eye contact or speaking too loudly. The facility made efforts to manage these disputes by isolating her at times, hoping to prevent any escalation that might necessitate her removal. Over the first eight months, I noticed a decline in her spirit, likely due to the isolation and reduced social interactions, which may have contributed to her feeling of loneliness. Eventually, there was a slight improvement in her ability to socialize with others, but her unchanged demeanor led to her eviction from the facility. Moving to a new place didn't help. She remained isolated, and her loneliness appeared to deepen, potentially hastening the onset of dementia. It's a sorrowful situation, especially considering the separation from her family, but maintaining peace for all seemed paramount. Meanwhile, my life took a significant turn as I moved to France with my husband, whose job required him to travel abroad more frequently. Initially hesitant due to my commitment to running a cafe, the graduation of three student workers presented an opportunity to explore new horizons. Closing the cafe, I embarked on a dream to start a restaurant abroad. The transition was challenging, particularly due to the language barrier, which initially confined me to our home. However, my integration into the community began when I made friends locally, one of whom helped me secure a job at a grocery store. This new chapter, despite its difficulties, opened up avenues for growth and new experiences in an unfamiliar setting. Over time, my ability to communicate in the local language improved significantly, encouraging me to embark on a new venture, opening a quaint cafe nestled in a cozy corner of our new town. Back in Vancouver, we owned a house still under mortgage. Faced with the decision of selling it amidst unfounded neighborhood gossip, we ultimately chose to sell, using the proceeds to finance my cafe dream. The cafe's opening day was a huge success, buoyed by the support of many friends I'd made and a social media campaign highlighting. It as a homemade spot run by a Canada. The catalyst for starting the cafe was my acquisition of permanent residency in France, a development that coincided with my husband's increasing professional opportunities abroad. His company's decision to relocate him to their French and branch facilitated our decision to settle here permanently. Although he later left that position, his current role has proven to be a perfect fit, allowing him to thrive and match my earnings. As we navigated our new life in France, the joyous news of expecting a child came as a miraculous surprise, given previous medical advice about the challenges of natural conception. This unexpected blessing has filled us with anticipation and excitement for the future. We're eager to welcome our new addition, despite the challenges parenting may bring, confident in our ability to manage together. The warm and welcoming community in our new town has celebrated our news with genuine enthusiasm, reassuring us of the supportive environment our child will grow up in. This overwhelming support reinforces our belief that our family will find happiness and a strong sense of belonging in our new home.